How's it going everybody? My name is Philip, and today we are reacting to Geography Now, Denmark. Now if you watch some of my previous videos or anything else that in which I have talked about Denmark, I okay. I said it was close to to Sweden and Finland and, and it kind of is, but I always get Denmark and Norway mixed up. I don't know why. I mean, it's I, I just do, unfortunately. I'm sorry. I apologize. I know some people might not care, and you're just like, oh, whatever. But I still, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've, I've, a lot of people are like, oh, Denmark's close to Russia? Huh? Listen, I, I'm sorry. It's close. Not as close as... Norway, like I was saying, me meaning, just. So, anyways, we're gonna hopefully help help me understand Denmark more, which actually, Danish Norwegian. So my great grandmother, maybe my great grandfather. Anyways, my ancestors. <laughs> Let's just go with that. Oh, you know, the, my previous people, family. Uh, some of them I think are from Denmark. Huh? Denmark? What the f Some of them were from Denmark and Norway. I don't think Sweden. I'm I'm like like 90% positive not Sweden. But it was Denmark Norway area. I do think that there's more Norwegian than D Danish. But regard anyway, yeah. So fact yay that's that's about it so let's get into the, the video remember in the angola episode i mentioned how i went to denmark one time and bought a sandwich that was 21 dollars well nope. this was that sandwich and that my video. reaction was like 21 dollars oh this better be the best sandwich i've ever had in my life you got lucky it's time to learn geography now hey everybody i'm your host barbie legos vikings and roll roll my floor. We got a lot to cover, so let's jump in. That'd be pretty good, though. I'm not gonna lie. It's like it's like what Jello. And ah, Denmark, the link cream. between the rest of Europe and Scandinavia. So much to discuss. Denmark is classified as a Nordic yeah, country, that's... hence located in the Northern European region, even though it's kind oh. of like the southern. I'm sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm apologies again. I was thinking Finland. Okay, Nor. I thought Norway. Norway was all the way that way a bit. I thought Norway, Sweden, Finland. I got Sweden correct. I just I swapped it around. Oh my god, I didn't realize Norway had all of that. For some reason, I just thought they all... I mean, never mind. I'm so sorry. Regardless, I'm, I apologize. I'm, I'm sorry. As a Nordic country, hence located in the Northern European region, even though it's kind of like the southernmost state in the Nordics. Full disclaimer, ignore Wikipedia. I'm going to pronounce the location names in their proper Danish context. So here we go. Denmark is made of the Juland, not Jutland, peninsula that connects to Germany in the south, as well as 1,419 islands. Of those, Damn. only 443 are named and 74 are inhabited. With the largest island being Shelland, not Zealand, which is not to be confused with Dutch Zeeland, which is not to be confused with New Zealand, although they did get their <laughs> name. I can't take it! That's too much information! It is connected to Foon Island, not Finn Island, by the Great Belt Bridge completed in 1998. The country is divided into five regions, the capital being Copenhagen, located on Schellen. Copenhagen is home to a myriad of historical sites, palaces, statues, residential units that are all the same height and style, with pockets of Granted, colorful, quaint, cozy shops and cafes, and dangerous <laughs> bicycle lanes that you are not supposed to walk on. Now, this is where things are going to get a little spiced Ooh. up, and by spiced up, I mean freezing cold and covered in whale blubber. Denmark, for those of you who didn't know, is a kingdom, one of the last surviving ones in in Europe and is currently under the headship of chain-smoking Queen Margaret II. These still fall under Danish sovereignty and make up the massive Greenland Island and the Little Faroe Islands. Both of these places are radically different from mainland Denmark. For one, Greenland is primarily inhabited by native Inuit tribal peoples that live on the island and is 80% covered in ice year-round. The Faroe Islands are a conglomeration of 20-ish mystical cloudy windy islands that have this crazy looking 
lake that looks like yeah. it's about to spill over the cliffs into the ocean. These two areas have their own self-governing home rule, otherwise only depending on Denmark for military, justice, currency, and foreign affairs. Otherwise, I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, historically, they did try to kind of create an empire by colonizing parts of the Caribbean, Ghana, India, and then in the Nicobar Islands and the Indian Ocean, oh, but they like kind of ran out of money and ended up selling everything to other countries. Too bad, <laughs> it would be awesome to see people in the Indian Ocean speaking Danish. Nonetheless, mainland like Denmark is kind of like a fast-moving economic machine. Let's talk about how. Wasn't quite sure. Now, when it comes to land makeup, Denmark is pretty flat. I mean, the highest point, Mullehoy, is only about 170 meters tall, and it looks like this. Otherwise, only about 13% of the country is forested, including the tree plantations, and the rest is pretty much used for agriculture that can produce enough food to feed about 15 million people. It's about three times the size of their entire population. Good for you, Denmark. But one yeah. thing Denmark is actually famous for growing is non-produce plants, like grass, fodder, and Christmas trees. The highly sought-after <laughs> Danish Nordman fir has been classified as the Rolls Royce of Christmas trees, and every year, investors from Germany, the Netherlands, and even the UK jump in at the end of November and grab whatever they can before it's gone. Now, one yeah, thing you need to know is that like many other areas in the Nordic region, Denmark's weather can be quite uh, dreary. First of all, Denmark is the only Nordic country that doesn't really get a lot of snow. Denmark is kind of like the mud pit located below the jet stream <laughs> blocked by Norway and the UK. This means that even though it gets really cold, pressure systems rarely cause snow. This is also pretty much okay. why everybody dresses like a J. Crew fall fashion line model on the streets. If you're gonna get wet and freezing, you may as well look good while doing it. Otherwise, yeah, I mean, pretty much the rest of Denmark is just okay. rolling green plains with sandy beaches and quirky little islands that people like to hop over for camping trips in the summer. If we were gonna talk about Greenland and the Faroe Islands, we would get a radically different story of mind-boggling, captivating cliffs, bluffs, sea stacks, glaciers, fissures, icebergs, so cool. and mountains. If you don't know what a Mulan is, it's not this, <laughs> but this. This Mulan is large enough to swallow a school bus. But we'll have to save that for another video that'll come That's out in 9,374 cool. years. So in the meantime, at, let's talk about the people. Because you're dead, I'm sure. Now this is gonna get really fun. Denmark's people are really unique in their cultural, historical, and postmodern upbringing. First of all, the country has about 5.7 million people and is one of the highest taxed countries in the world. About 89% of the country right. identifies as ethnically Danish, about 11% are others. Some of the largest groups in the other category the being others. the Polish, Germans, <laughs> Turkish, the Romanians, Iraqis, and Afghans. Now when it comes to Danish culture, there's a lot behind it, but in a nutshell, Vikings. Vikings pretty much had their start in what is now present-day Denmark and whom pretty much dominated all of the Nordic regions <laughs> as go. far as Let's New go. Finland and Canada to Estonia. Which is why most of the Nordic states and regions can pretty much understand each other when they talk. Danes, Swedes, Norwegians, and Icelanders can See, that's, generally- that's, that's part of the reason why. They're so similar. I guess the red's a bit different now that I look at it. Okay. I need to remember that Norway has the blue cross in it. Okay? And the red's a bit different. I mean, but if the red wasn't as different, understand each other as they have Wait, the same basic that? linguistic structure. Sure, there are subtle Still. discrepancies, but overall, they can kind of get by conversationally. <laughs> Granted, there's a saying, the Norwegian and Swedish languages sound like dancing fairies, whereas the Danish language sounds like a dude with a potato in his mouth. By the way, anybody who wants to learn Danish, full disclosure, it's gonna suck. The J makes the Y sound, the Y makes the U sound, the V makes a W sound, the R makes a R sound, the H is silent half the time, a ton of the letters are never even used, and don't even get started on A, U, and O. I kind of- I will say though, we, here in the US, you know, with well, it's not Missouri. It's, it's like a southern state. Arkansas. The fuck? There's Kansas, and then there's Arkansas. We do some stupid shit, too. Discovered a little trick, though, Just when saying. I went to Denmark. When speaking Danish, all you really have to do is kind of, like, pronounce the first part of the word that you think makes a sound, and then just kind of, like, give up on the rest of the word. For example, Kupenhaan. Nubrogen, Lufstrain. I'm literally just listing names of places in Copenhagen that I've been to. Honestly though, you really won't have much of a problem getting around if you speak English. Over 80% of the entire country, oh, mostly nice. the younger generation, speaks proficient English to the point where they don't even need subtitles when watching American TV shows and movies. Also, keep in mind, Greenland has its own language that is completely unintelligible as it's an Inuit language closer to the indigenous Inuktitut and Yupik languages found in Canada and Alaska. Like and Faroese is pretty hard for most Danish people to grasp as it actually has more words rooted in the ancient Norse language, and it's actually more intelligible to Icelandic. Back to culture, though, Denmark has definitely left its mark, whether it's notable figures like author Hans Christian Andersen, yeah, philosopher Søren Kierkegaard, or whether... Pronounce his name? That's actually how you pronounce his name. Wow. It's not Søren Kierkegaard. It's 
or whether it be the invention of the loudspeaker or Legos or their love of handball, their impeccable architecture, love of cuisine. Noma in Copenhagen, by the way, being voted the best restaurant in the world with plates that feature live ants and moss. If you're really gonna get a huh? feel for Danish culture, sorry, though, you kind of have to know about Janteloten and Hygge. The funny thing is, Danes are kind of brought up in a social mindset that is kind of integrated into their subconscious known as Janteloten, which kind of translates to something like, <laughs> you are not better than the crowd, which I know sounds kind of depressing, but it's really trying to instill a sense of equality and communal cooperation. See, Hygge trans... I'm sorry, but that sounds like something that we need to try and implement here in the U.S. People not thinking that they're better than people. I'm just saying. I've been... <sighs> Certain people at work that I'm just like, bro, you don't know what you're doing. What are you... Translates to something like spend good times with friends and family, and it's like a cozy thing. Of course, Denmark is known for being ranked one of the happiest overall countries, even though they are also kind of one of the highest ranked consumers of antidepressants as well. But hey, they still pull off everyday life looking <laughs> oh so works, good, even if it's during one of those really loud annual emergency drills. Okay, Christine, explain what's happening right now. Denmark is testing the sirens. No, <laughs> that's warfare. so mad. Yeah, when we're being attacked by the Germans again. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm really, really scared right now. Let's run to the security basement. <laughs> the Germans are coming. Speaking of Germans. Careful. <laughs> now, we all know that one person we're all kind of jealous of because they're kind of rich, well-adjusted, and have a ton of friends, and they're, like, kind of good-looking. Well, that's no, Norway. Denmark is a little bit rockier. No, but seriously, for such a small nation, Denmark has a huge entourage of friends, and it's almost kind of hard for anyone in the world to dismiss them at a party. As a founding member of the EU and NATO, Denmark has nice. had roots planted in diplomacy for decades. First off, Denmark generally gets along with Germany. Business between the Germans now, is a hugely yeah. integral part of their economy, and Denmark <laughs> acts like the gate way to Scandinavia for them and the rest of Europe. The US and the UK are incredibly close as both tangible and cultural imports have been established for centuries. For a while, the Danes even took over parts of the UK, which is why to this day the English language still retains hundreds of <laughs> Old Norse-derived words like leg, dog, and window. The closest friends, though, would have to be the Nordic countries, yeah. Finland, Sweden, Norway, and Iceland. These four are without a doubt Denmark's closest friends, even though Sweden and them have kind of had more wars and battles historically than any other two states in the world. They've moved huh. on and grown up. Out of the Nordic countries, though, Sorry, Norway would probably be considered their best friends. Nowadays. Danes are obsessed with Norwegians and often consider Norway the girlfriend they took away from Sweden. In conclusion, <laughs> Denmark is the rich, rainy rascal that always seems to show up on time for every party, but somehow gets all his work done in an organized, efficient manner. Stay tuned, oh, nice. Djibouti is coming up next. He didn't go through about food. I mean, I, I, he, okay, so he did a little bit of food, but he went by really fast. He didn't really go by a lot of food, how he's done in the past with South Africa and Japan and whatnot, but um, I, I was hoping to see more food related stuff. I am still quite chunky. I wear light clothes, loose clothes that make it look like I'm not as chunky, but I mean, you can kind of tell on my face. <laughs> Perfect. That shows how chunky. <laughs> oh, I don't even know how to lose that. That's, that's unfortunate. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I really enjoy again, I would I just want to travel. This you know, it's just something I want to do. But unfortunately, it's it's a little bit more on the difficult side of doing that. You know? But I feel like I should do Norway next or even I've been to Ireland. So maybe I should learn about Ireland, England, Wales, I have not gone to Scotland. I've been to Canada. And that's about it. But. Yeah. Let me know if there's specific food or like something different. That, that I should react to when it comes to either Danish culture or, or any other culture really. Because I'm, I'm all about wanting to learn about culture. Because uh, I'm, uh, I'm. I'm stuck here for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well I mean until I get super rich which as as you can see is very unlikely um just not gonna travel much you know but let me know what else I should react to in the comment section below and I will add it to the list thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time if you subscribe if you don't subscribe then 
Ouch. 